If you're looking to upgrade your photography website or you're building your very first photography website, this video is going to crush it for you. Now, I've redesigned my photography website since I got into this business about 50 million times. And since I started Signature Edits, I've actually seen hundreds of different photography websites and I've had the chance to see what works and what doesn't, what marketing ideas pay off and which ones really result in crickets. So I sat down and I figured out, okay, of everything I've seen, what are the top nine strategies, the top nine key ingredients to a website that you need to have if you are into photography and you're building a photography site, what do you need to have in order to succeed? What's the difference between the winners and the losers? The difference that will set your photography brand apart book more clients, get more inquiries, and ultimately just build your business. So inside this video, we're gonna get into it. Let's hit that intro. What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits. And inside of this video, we are talking about the nine things that your photography website absolutely must have if you wanna see results in your business. Now, by applying these concepts, you are radically going to improve the amount of contacts you get from your website, the amount of visitors you get to your website, how well you rank on Google. We're gonna talk about pretty much everything from building trust and relationships to actually capturing the lead, nurturing the lead, and closing the sale. So. If that sounds valuable to you, please do me a favor, hit the like button, leave a comment right now because that's just gonna help this video get out and help more people. Now, who am I? My name is Ryan. I've been building wedding photography businesses for several years now. I started signature edits a few years ago, helping photographers of all kinds, wedding photographers, landscape photographers, travel photographers, you name it, with presets, editing tutorials, and resources to help them build their businesses. And over that time, I've had the chance to see hundreds of different photographers' websites and brands and really kind of crack the code a little bit on what makes a good looking and good performing website versus what makes a website that just falls flat. It might have a great design, but it's actually not doing what you want it to do. And that's really the issue, right? You can spend a ton of time creating a beautiful website, but if it's not actually resulting in you getting clients and getting bookings, clearly something is wrong. So these nine things are kind of a little checklist that you can give yourself and say, hey, do I have all of these features on my site? And if you do, if you add these things, I guarantee you, you're going to see an increase in sales and bookings as a result, okay? So enough with the intro. If this has already been valuable, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe. Let's dive into the content. I have nothing to sell you here. We are literally just going into it and giving you as much value as I can because I've learned these things the hard way and over time seeing tons and tons of photographers' websites. So let's dive in together, shall we? All right, number one, the first thing you need on your site you already know this, but I have to say it because it's amazing how often I don't see it. Consistent, gorgeous photos. If your website is a photography website or a videography website, whether it's for wedding, fashion, you name it, it has to have amazing work. Now, what does this actually mean? Because there are different uh, quantifications when it comes to actually determining what consistent, beautiful work looks like. The first thing is your editing style needs to be consistent. So from photo to photo to photo, we're talking you've got the same consistent look and feel to your images. Why is this important? Because if you've got shoots from um, five, five years back and you've got three different editing styles and all sorts of different filters and approaches and kind of work up there, it's going to be really confusing to the client. They're going to say, I don't actually know what I'm going to get if I book this photographer. Like I'm Good. I like this shoot, but this shoot is weird. And this shoot maybe resonates with me, but this one I really don't like. And you'll be amazed at how people never even reach out to you simply because you have one portfolio piece in your website that just doesn't line up with the rest of your work. And because of that, people instantly have a red flag and says, hmm, am I gonna be that one person who doesn't get what I wanted? Because I hate that wedding, but every other wedding is great, but I don't wanna risk it, right? And so they go next. So consistent, gorgeous work. Now, the second part of this is a clear and focused portfolio. Now, common mistake, common approach I see a lot of photographers make is they try and go for everyone. They're gonna do wedding photography, they're gonna do families, they're gonna do fashion, they're gonna do corporate, they're gonna do commercial. A lot of photographers do this, and I will say, a lot of photographers pull it off. But if we're actually talking about creating a website that is working for you, having one specific style of photography you do and one specific type of photography you do is gonna be way, way stronger and really position you as an expert far more than having a bunch of different shoots, right? At the end of the day, if you're going in for heart surgery, do you want to have a heart surgeon or do you wanna have just a general doctor who knows a little bit about everyone? Obviously, you want the heart surgeon who deals with your specific problem. So the same goes for, for photography, right? If you position yourself as, hey, I do fashion photography in Hawaii for active brands, and that's all I do, all of a sudden you're an expert because that is your category and you own that category. Whereas if you try and do a little bit of everything, here's all my work, 
automatically when I see your website, I say, eh, I mean, their work is good, but I'd rather go with somebody who just focuses on what I specifically need. Lastly, you want to post work that you <laughs> want to attract. So at the end of the day, if you want to work with a specific type of client and you want to do specific types of shoots, you need to be showing that work. At the end of the day, if your work um, does not actually showcase the kind of stuff you want to do, you're never going to attract the clients you want to attract, right? Because if I want to be doing um, $100,000 photography shoots off in some exotic locations, but I have no exotic work in my portfolio and I have no high-end looking photo shoots in my portfolio, it's going to be really, really hard to ever build that level of trust with the client because the client who has that kind of work for me is looking for a specific photographer who already does that, right? So we need to create that kind of work. Now, you can do this through collaborations. You can do it through second shooting for photographers already doing the kind of stuff you want to do. You can actually go out and do style shoots and put together a team who all wants to pursue this kind of work, whether it's a makeup artist and, you know, how a style shoot works. So <laughs> you're going to go ahead, create the kind of work that you want to do so that you can attract the kind of clients who want that work. All right, case study. Let's look at two case studies, Colin Creates and Steve Mo Photo. So here's an example here. We go over here. So let's head over here, Colin Creates. Now this is an example of a fantastic photographer, friend of a friend of mine, and um, he specifically does shoots for brands in Hawaii. Now there are some from other places now that he's built his portfolio, but he does travel photography. Like that's his niche. And when you check out his Instagram feed, you can see that's what he does. He does exotic landscapes, really incredible wide portrait, not portrait, really incredible wide landscape photography and a lot of hero shots. So he's very consistent in the style of work that he delivers to clients. And so his clients are like, I want to hire this guy because his stuff is just amazing across the board. He's got a lot of variety, which shows his capabilities, but it's all variety within a very specific niche. Okay. Let's look at another one. Steve Moe photography, good friend of mine, awesome guy down in LA. Now there's some things about his website that we'll talk about later that maybe could be improved. However, you can see his niche, very, very specific. It's kind of like an outdoorsy, very, um, editorial feel. And we've got a lot of surf and beach photos. Like that's what he does. He's not mixing it up with a whole bunch of other stuff on his homepage. Okay. So let's move on to thing number two. Now that we've got that out of the way, the obvious is covered. Let's talk about some more things that you probably might not be using yet in your website that could instantly generate some results. Number two, 10 things your website must have is social proof. So if you're not using this already, you need reviews on your website. People need to have a reason to trust you. And that's the hardest part about actually getting the booking is you have to convince somebody who's a complete stranger that they can trust you and give you their money and they're going to believe that you'll give them what you promise and what they're looking for. More specifically, the result they are looking for, not specifically what you are promising. Does that make sense? So when I go to a doctor, it's not about what the doctor's giving me. Like he can say, oh, I can do a checkup and I can give you a prescription and I can do, like there are a ton of things that doctors can do, but he's not doing that. He's actually finding out, okay, what's your problem? And then he's going to provide a solution to that problem. As a photographer, you wanna do the same thing. You wanna demonstrate that you can provide that solution through social proof. So we're talking about things like work that your client loves. So obviously it starts with the portfolio, which creates belief. If he's done it for other people, if she's done it for other people, they can do the same amazing work for me. The second thing, testimonials on your website. So you need to contact your previous clients and get testimonials. If you're just starting up, you don't have any testimonials. You haven't worked with many people in the past. What I did to start out was honestly, I reached out to friends. So my friends knew that I was getting into photography. They knew I was a great guy. And I said, Hey, could you just write me like a a quick reference, just a sentence or two, and they would go, okay, Ryan is an awesome guy. He's got a huge passion. I love being around him, right? Like that doesn't even talk about the photography side of things, but do you think a client cares if Ryan is a great guy and he's nice to be around and you love being with him? Of course. So I could post that on my website and now I've got a review from somebody and that's creating a little bit more belief and trust. Next, client videos. Now this is taking that whole concept to the next level and something that pretty much no photographer is actually doing or sharing. And it's because it's a little bit more work, honestly. But if you actually contact your clients after the wedding, after the engagement, after the corporate shoot, and you say, hey, I wanna shoot a really quick video if your experience was good, you are going to get insane results from this because there is nothing more believable and trust building than hearing from a past client, especially when it's in video. Because in text form, yeah, okay, a testimonial means something, but when it's actually the person you can connect with and see talking about their experience, it's got this extra layer of proof and trust to it. 
So that's a huge one. Uh, Google reviews, very powerful. At the end of every session, I make sure to send a follow-up email. And so I'll say, hey, thanks. It was so awesome. Here's your photos. By the way, if you had a great experience, can you leave me a Google review? Click this link. And by doing that, I'm generating Google reviews, which helps with SEO and showing up on Google, but also is going to create an extra layer of social proof. Because yeah, you could fake testimonials on your website. It's much more hard to fake them on Google. Lastly, featured logos. So of course, if you're a corporate photographer and you work with cool brands, you want to feature those. However, even if you aren't a corporate photographer, if you're a wedding photographer, you can get featured magazine features. <laughs> that was bad English, but hopefully you understand what I mean. Once I have finished a wedding, let's say, or a portrait shoot, I'll actually go out and I'll look for magazines and um, online blogs and features that will feature that style of work. And then you reach out to them, say, hey, I've got these photos. I'd love to give them to you to feature on your blog or to add to this new article or whatever it is. You get a few of those, add those badges to your website. That's going to create instant credibility and trust. Okay, so let's look at a couple case studies. We've got Seven Figure Agency and Single Grain, and neither of these are photography websites. Now, that's a hot tip I really wanna give you early on in this whole process, is when you're designing your website, when you're looking for ways to improve your marketing, think beyond looking at what other photographers are doing. Because most photographers, let's be real, are making between, let's say, zero and 50 grand a year. And if you're on the high end, great, but they're not doing millions of dollars worth of marketing campaigns, they're not, creating huge amounts of revenue. So if you actually go to other businesses and you look at what other more successful companies are doing, sometimes you can get some tricks that other photographers aren't using because everybody's copying each other, but you go outside to another industry and you can apply those same techniques inside your own. Okay, so let's look at seven figure agency. Okay, so social proof here is exactly what I mean. Uh, we land on here, we've got a free training video, get started, okay, great, but as we scroll down right at the top here, you're gonna see testimonials. So they've actually got video stories that I can go through and watch. And there are different ways of actually gathering these. Of course, you can do it at the end of the session. So if you've got an engagement shoot or a corporate client shoot, literally if there's time, you say, hey, could you film like a quick two minute video where you just talk about your experience today? And 99% of the time, if it was a good shoot, they'll be like, yeah, sure. The key is making it easy and pain free. Or you follow up after the date and say, hey, if you had a great experience, can you do me the most massive favor and send me a quick video testimonial? So I would send that to a wedding client and say, hey, it's so amazing working with you. By the way, could you do this while you're on your honeymoon for two seconds or <laughs> after the honeymoon, whatever, and in return, I'll buy you guys dinner or something like that. Honestly, these things are worth their weight in gold. It would definitely be worth it for you to spend and incentivize your clients with, say, a $50 gift certificate 10 times. Spend 500 bucks, get 10 of these. It's going to make a massive difference in your campaign, okay? So that's the first thing. Second one we're going to look at is called Single Grain. And again, it's just an example. You can see every major company that does good business is going to have authority built up by having those logos pretty much right at the top. And then again, we've got testimonials right here. And then they've got more kind of proof right in front of you by saying we rank number one on Google for competitive keywords. So they actually offer SEO for big business, which helps them rank on Google. So they say, hey, we actually have done it for ourselves and we've done it for our clients. So let's talk. So building proof that you can deliver is really, really important on your homepage and making it super obvious right away that you are trustworthy. Okay. Number three, your unique offer. So here's the thing that a lot of starting out photographers and when you're redesigning a website, people struggle with. And that's creating something that actually sets you apart from the thousand other photographers in your town. How do you do that? Well, the first thing is to highlight what makes you different and more valuable. So you can even get a piece of paper, write that kind of stuff down. And remember that you in this experience are the most unique part, right? Like there's other photographers using the same gear as you. There are other photographers photographing the same locations. There are other photographers who are probably better at what you do. There are other photographers who pretty much do every other thing that you are offering in terms of the package, which comes with X amount of hours and an album and whatever it is, right? So think about it. The most unique part of your service is you. So that is the thing you really want to lean into the most when you're building your website and building your marketing is you're selling you. You're selling the experience with you. You're selling that unique thing that nobody else can replicate. So you need to ask yourself, what parts of you do you give that is really, really valuable to the client? So for me, I just like having fun. I like connecting with people and I actually care about the clients. Now, pretty much everybody would say that about themselves, but very few actually say it on the website, which instantly sets you apart by doing that and creating a human personal connection and remembering that that person is a human, you are a human, and you just want to connect with them on that kind of level. So other things you can do, 
added services, what do you do that is different or unique from what most other photographers do? So most other photographers might offer a limited number of hours for the wedding day. You could offer unlimited. Or most photographers might charge for an engagement shoot. You could do the shoot for free and then later on build that into your package pricing. So you still get paid for it. It's just up front the shoot is free. Um, maybe you have unique equipment. So you take a Polaroid and you actually, again, just do some film stuff while you're there. Maybe you offer sort of like a photo booth setup. So that's a really interesting offer you could add that most photographers don't do that probably wouldn't take you that much time or energy. The first time to get the props and the way you set it up, that might take some time. But later on, once you've got just a digital, not a digital, one of those like film instant cameras, and you've got a couple props and like a little backdrop you set up, you arrive 20 minutes early, you set this up, and then that becomes a huge feature for the wedding. And you could even have that be part of your marketing component by having the backdrop have your logo or something like that, or having the photos sent to you, and then you deliver them. So like the guests have to enter their email in order to get those photos. Like there's a lot of different ways to make this valuable. Okay, um, specific niche and experience. Again, the more specific a problem you solve, the more valuable you are to the client. So if you do wedding photography, that's great, but it's even better if you do specific destination elopement photography because now it's like a very specific need for the client. Or you do wedding photography that has a very high fashion editorial feel, like a very specific client. There was a Wedding photographer who I saw in DC, I reached out to a bunch of photographers in the area and I got a bunch of different packages. Now the one in DC sent me this package and I was blown away because <laughs> she charged like $20,000 for her wedding photography services. Now I want you to think about something. If you're a client and you reach out to 10 different photographers and all of them are in the same price range, they're all three to $4,000 for nine out of 10 and then you get one and it's $20,000. It's interesting that in a way, even though it costs way more and they might provide the exact same service, they've now set themselves apart from every other photographer. And I assume that in some way, shape or form, what they're doing is going to be more valuable. And so that's kind of the unique offer right there. So it's interesting. You don't necessarily have to offer more. You could literally just raise your price to five times what everybody else is charging. Now, I'm not saying that'll work for you, but if your work also lines up with that kind of value and you can make that experience so much more valuable, you could do it. Okay, um, partnerships and um, specific like vendor relationships to create massive value. This is a really interesting thing that you could do, right? You could say, okay, most photographers, they just offer photography services, but what if I took care of the other parts too? So I actually have a wedding package that partners with a planner and partners with an event uh, manager and partners with a hairstylist and a makeup artist. And like, so you book me and you get all these things, this list of vendors, or maybe I have a discount worked out ahead of time with different people. So I have a discount for a local company that does rentals for different event decor. I have a discount for this, a discount for that. And you can arrange these partnerships and actually add more value to your offer. And you don't necessarily even have to have it to do directly with your shoot. So let's say that you're a wedding photographer because it's an easy example a lot of you can relate to, okay? You've got a wedding photographer package, but what other value could you add that solves other problems in your client's life? So, okay, they're doing a wedding. Maybe we could actually have a vendor relationship with some kind of event company that organizes really, really cool engagement parties. Or we could have another venue that'll offer some kind of service for the bachelor party. Or we could have some kind of discount for the brides to go down to Vegas for a week. Like, there's just an endless number of things that you could possibly pair up that have nothing to do with wedding photography, but make your overall package a lot more valuable. Think like adding bonuses. Now, one other thing to kind of consider with this is you can actually turn this into a money-making opportunity for you. So a lot of vendors will actually pay for referrals. So if you reached out to a company and sa you said, hey, I want to offer my clients a discount on limousine rental services and I want to have you as my exclusive recommendation. They might give you a discount, which helps the client, and you, in return, might get a referral fee from that limousine company every single time you send a client their way. So it helps the client. It helps the company who gets new business and you make more money as a result. So again, adding to your unique offer, you can actually monetize it as well. Okay. One uh, X valuable resources. I have no idea what that means. So we're just going to skip it because I can't remember, <laughs> but I'm sure it was good. Okay. Case studies. Let's talk about Don photo, Dylan and Sandra breeze photos and agent lead pro. We got a ton here. Before I move forward, if this has been helpful, can you do me a favor? Hit that like button really quick. Make sure to smash subscribe and leave a comment. What has been the most resonating thing so far and what are you committed to doing to your website today? Cool. Let's move on. As you write it down, you'll apply more often. 
Don Foro. Okay. So talking about unique offers, highlight what makes you different and more valuable. So that's what Dawn does a really amazing job of. Obviously, she's got incredible work, and her main thing is she does like adventurous elopement. So she's showcasing that right now. It's like, okay, this is unique. Not many photographers do these style of shoots. So that's thing number one. Number two, okay, she's got her main offer right here. Your outdoor love in Oregon elopement photographer for the thoughtful ones. So she's targeting thoughtful brides and grooms. She's targeting elopement couples, and she is targeting people who are outdoor loving. So a very specific client that she solves a very specific problem for, and so she can charge more, and she can be more attractive to that client. She's building trust. She's solving a specific problem. And then we go down here, and again, Beautiful thing you should do on your webpage, sell you, sell what makes you unique, sell what you do differently, sell the experience with you and what they can expect, right? So she says, I'm Don, I'm, I can't say that on YouTube, stoked that you're here. I seriously cannot begin to tell you how pumped I am. So I want you to notice that she's not like, Don Photography is a photography studio based in Nashville, Tennessee, who operates in the family industry. Like, it's very personal, very specific, and very much selling the human interaction, Okay. Let's move on to another one, another great one, but totally different at the same time, Dylan and Sandra. So their main pitch, authentic moments for the joyful romantic. Okay, now it's definitely a bit more vague and it's reaching to kind of a larger audience, right? It's a bit more, let's almost call it close cliche, but at the same time, it is specific. Like, okay, we want romantic people, all right? And Southwestern Ontario wedding photographers. Okay, cool. Capturing real moments so you get lost in your love story, relive it over and over again, and then they've got their work. So this is going to hopefully resonate with a specific target, bride, groom, whatever. Inquire now. And then they've got featured weddings. They've got their social proof up here. And then they've got about us. So here's us. If you like us, let's talk. So you can see that there's different levels of how powerful this can be, right? Like with Dawn, because I'm an out vent. I'm an outventurous, I'm an outdoor and adventurous kind of person. This is the kind of work that I would be immediately drawn to far more than Dylan and Sandra, who is like more bright, airy, clean, timeless, let's call it like high-end luxury, right? So it's just a different client they're appealing to. So there's different methods depending on who it is you're trying to capture. Whether it's wedding photography, fashion, corporate, it doesn't really matter, okay? So they talk a little bit about the, them, they share their story, perfect life is good. All right, it's Breeze Photos. Breeze photos, they do, again, elopement photography. They're showcasing a very specific area. We do it in the Banff and kind of Kananaskis, Alberta, Rocky Mountain photo shoots. So that's their specific client. Very outdoorsy, very, again, adventurous. And talking about who they are, what they do. And have a photo of yourself that is actually like real life you. Not one that's like you posing in a suit. One that is real life you and creates instant connection or repels brides you don't want to work with or clients you don't want to work with if you're not in wedding photography. At the end of the day, people connect with you and they'll connect more if you're being real, if you're being authentic. People want authenticity and that's going to make a big difference in your marketing. Okay, one more, Agent Lead Pro. All right, so this one, totally different left field example here. Right away, they're talking about their unique offer and what makes them unique, and it's super easy to figure out. Okay, we do lead funnels, we do reviews, we do web chat. So it's like super easy to figure out what this company does on the surface and what makes them different. I want you to think, if you took this kind of a strategy and applied it to your website, what might your website look like? Because right now, maybe it's just really unfocused. It's a whole bunch of different things on here. What specific things do you want to leverage and say, hey, this makes me unique, this makes me unique, this makes me unique, and highlight those things in an easy way, because most people aren't going to read your website right away. They'll go back and do that later, but instantly they should be able to tell within five seconds of scrolling what it is you're about and what makes you special. Moving on into number four, from that unique offer, focusing on what is the most unique part, which is you and the experience with you. Number four is building your attractive character. So think of it this way. The most unique part of your offer is you. And so that's the most valuable thing that you can bring to a business, to your clients, is the fact that they get to work with you. You're the only person on the planet who does you the way that you do you. And the real key about creating an attractive character is actually presenting yourself in such a way that is attractive to the client and tells a little bit more of your story other than just the fact that you're a photographer and you do this kind of work. So who is your target avatar? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Who is that dream client and what are they about? Like, what do they value? What problems do they have? What concerns do they have? What do they love? What do they hate? And then you want to position yourself 
as that attractive character, as the potential person they'd love to be best friends with. And you show that part of yourself. So your unique story shows them that you actually understand them, you get them, and that you can help them with their unique gifts, struggles, needs, desires, right? And so again, just reframing, the key is that you are not a business. It's not that people are booking a photography studio and they're looking for some corporate entity. Nobody wants that. People want to work with a real person who knows their problems, understands their pain, and can help them where they're at and care about them as a person, right? It's human to human, not business to client. So case study for this, Evelyn Grace Photo. She does an amazing job. So here's her website. Check her out. California-based adventurous destination wedding photographers. You're going to see a lot of these other principles still being applied here. But she does an amazing job of building her attractive character. You can see just from the photos right here, like I already just from this one photo have a sense of who this person is and what she's about. She's a joyful kind of person, a human being who loves to just let loose, let her hair down, have some fun, go travel somewhere awesome. Like these kind of photos in your business are going to be immeasurably valuable in kind of just showing and telling your story, right? It's that whole uh, phrase, show, don't tell. So if you can communicate it through an image or through a video, it's gonna be way more powerful than just saying it in words. And then again, look at the way she writes. Oh, hey, my name's Evelyn, but all my friends call me Evie and I'm freaking stoked you're here. So she's a California-based hot mess. That's pretty much my professional title, honestly. So she's being funny, she's being humorous, she's being just relatable and authentic and she's talking to me like a friend. So I already feel that friend vibe rather than like, Hello, welcome to Evelyn Grace Photography. Since 2016, we've been capturing exotic destination weddings, and we would love to tell your story and share your unique wedding adventure. It's like, okay, I mean, that's cool, but there's zero personality and zero connection in there. So that attractive character is everything. Let's check out when you click through to her about page. She's got even more. So again, she's just talking about herself telling you things that really have nothing to do with her services, which is producing wedding photography. But she's saying, not gonna lie, I wildly dance no matter where I am. Sing loud, proud in the shower and car, and can't get enough cheesy food, spontaneous adventures, and big bowls of ice cream. Okay, so she's not afraid, again, to say what she believes in, what she's about, what she's passionate about. And because of that, yeah, she's gonna turn off clients who aren't her dream client, but she's going to attract the people she really wants to work with, which is people who vibe with her, people who get that kind of thing, people who have those same shared identities, values, struggles, that kind of thing, right? And honestly, even if I'm not about Jesus, I'm about people who are about what they believe in and they're not afraid of it, right? So don't think you're going to necessarily turn everybody off by saying what you stand for. In fact, it's just the opposite. People who stand for nothing, that's the whole thing, right? People who stand for nothing, they're not attractive. They're just great. You want to create a situation where you present yourself in such a way that people either love you or hate you, but there's no middle ground. You want them to decide, and that is going to be memorable. Even if they hate you, at least they'll remember you. If you make zero impression because you're just this static, generic brand, you're not going to actually book any clients or make any connections because you haven't given them a reason to care. They'll just forget. They'll move on. They'll keep clicking. Okay, we got one more uh, website example that I think is a really great example. So again, same kind of thing. So just showing that you're a fun person, showing that you're the kind of person who your target avatar, whoever that is, would like to be around. So let's say that you do adventure photography. Um, one thing that you could do, of course, is show yourself adventuring, show yourself actually doing the stuff that you're trying to get work doing. Does that make sense? So if you want to take photos for a mountain bike company, having some photos of yourself mountain biking, showing that you're passionate, you understand the industry, you're about what they're about, it's going to go a long way to building that attractive character. Okay. So who are they? What do they value? And then your unique story that gets them um, thinking and feeling that they can actually relate to you and you can relate to them. Number five, location and venue SEO. So depending on the type of photography you do, this will be slightly different. So if you focus mainly on weddings, then obviously this is going to be super applicable to you directly because it's going to be as easy as just saying, okay, every wedding that you shoot, you should actually be aiming to create SEO content around that venue, that location, that vendor, all that kind of stuff. If you do different shoots, you're more into the fashion photography space, you would be producing content, hopefully, that would target SEO terms in that space. So let me explain this a little bit, okay? So when it comes to SEO, search engine optimization, and showing up in Google, most photographers do this very, very poorly. Why? Because SEO is about creating trust with Google and showing Google what your website is all about. Now, how does Google know when they go to your website what you're about? They know it by the text, basically, by what your image alt tags are. They know it by the descriptions. They know it by what kind of things you're writing in the posts, right? So 
For example, we've got Bree, and she's a Calgary wedding elopement photographer, currently located in Alberta. She goes throughout BC. She's got Tofino, Vancouver Island, New Zealand, Ireland, all of these locations listed. So then Google's going to look at it and say, okay, we are going to tag her for Calgary weddings. We're going to tag her for Banff. We're going to tag her for Alberta photography. We're going to tag her for BC. We're going to tag her for Tofino, Vancouver, that kind of thing. So the text on your website makes a big difference in showing Google what kind of search results they should place you in. So now when people search for a Calgary wedding photographer, Google's like, oh, Bree's photos said on their website that they're a Calgary photographer. Maybe we'll show them. All right. So that's like in a very overview nutshell what the basic strategy is. You want to have text that shows Google what kind of things your website does and is about. Most photography websites do a poor job at this because they don't actually reference specific tags. So the thing about this term, Calgary wedding photographer, is that it's very, very vague. So obviously there's going to be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 Calgary wedding photographers for Google to choose from. So that's a very broad term that's going to be hard for you to rank on. However, if you shot at a specific venue within Calgary, that is a term that you can rank for a lot more easily, even if there's um, other photographers shooting there because not many are actually applying this strategy. So what I mean is this. Let's look at this example here. We've got Cody and Allison. Let's go over here to stories. We're going to see their weddings. And this applies whether you do wedding photography or not. Let's go to their weddings. I want you to notice they're not just showing the couple's name. So like Bree and um, Michael. They're actually showing, okay, Mississippi estate wedding, Memphis wedding photographer. So that's the key term that they're trying to rank for within this post. Cedarwood weddings, Nashville wedding photographer. So every venue that you shoot at, you should actually, instead of posting that wedding around the couple and the couple's name, tag it and list all of the vendors that are interacting with that wedding and then place the focus on the venue. So you'd say, okay, wedding at Cedarwood Barnes or whatever this historic blah, 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 description of the venue, photos of the venue, tag the venue, and then at the top of every post, let's find a different one. Uh, this one for perhaps. At the top of every post, you can tell a story. You can tag all of the venues. And then Google's actually going to see you cross-linking to all of these local vendors, and it's going to associate you more effectively with all of these different places. So the Thompson, Nashville, and Cordell. And then you could actually have in here a paragraph about the Thompson, Nashville, and Cordell Hotel. And you talk about where it is, you give the address, the kind of price, the dates, the information that maybe a bride would find very helpful as she's scrolling. So it's not like you're just spamming the internet with this content. You're actually writing stuff that's going to be helpful to the people who are reading it. Now, how would you apply the same concept to non-wedding photography? If you do fashion photography, let's say with Steve Mo Photo, and he's doing surf stuff, you could actually write like the 10 best places to surf within Southern California, or the 10 best surf photographers, or the 10 best whatever, like stuff relating to the surf industry. So let's actually get a little bit more specific here. He does a shoot for Rip Curl, let's say. <clears throat> And then rather than just having the image here, he'd actually have a blog post that talks about rip curl and talks about surf photography and talks about um, best photo locations for surfing photography in SoCal. So by listing all of this information, Google's seeing all these tags and seeing, okay, surf photography, surf photography, Southern California surfing. And then it's going to slowly associate you more and show you up more in the SEO. And the more specific you can get, so showing specific beaches for surf photography, Google is going to have a lot less competition who are also posting information on that topic versus just surf photography in general. So if you get more specific, more laser focused, Google's going to start ranking you for these little terms. So here's another example of that. If we look up Kelowna wedding venues. Now this is where I was doing wedding photography back in the day. And it might have shifted here now because at this point a lot of photographers have copied me but we'll just look at this one. So right at the top here, you can see that Alicia Khan, a photographer, has gone ahead and made a list of her favorite wedding venues within the Okanagan. So she's gone through, she's found the link to each location, and then a short description of each of them, which has the tag. So it's got the location, it's got the name of the venue, it's got a link to the venue, little description. So very, very short and simple, and yet she's ranking at the very top when people search for wedding venues. So what's going to happen, people find that wedding venue post, they go through and they actually see, oh my gosh, there's all these locations, perfect. And then they click through and see her photography at the same time. So that's a concept. And that's originally what I did when I was not able to rank for Kelowna wedding photographer. I created these venue posts for each city, just like that. 
And all of a sudden I was ranking for all of these different topics, which boosted the rest of my SEO and eventually got me to the top number one place back when I was actually doing it for Kelowna Wedding Photographer. Okay. So if you want more information on SEO in general, I do have an SEO course on my website that you can check out. Um, but that should get you started. And definitely something you should be focused on is renaming the posts you already have and using the content you already have to create SEO friendly stuff, stuff that Google's actually going to see and be able to help other clients with rather than just Brie and Dennis had an amazing ceremony. Congrats guys. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. Number six, 10 things your photo website must have a clear next step. Now this is like probably the number one thing that photographers mess up on and all businesses mess up on because when you go to websites time after time after time after time they all say contact us or get in touch like something really vague and there's no real reason for me to get in touch so 99 percent of people don't it that's kind of an interesting thing to think about right like 90 percent of the people who go to your website don't actually contact you they just leave and never come back and so you're losing all that opportunity so you have to have a clearly defined next step and then give them a reason to take that next step so don't just have a contact us button or get in touch button, but think what is the one thing you actually want them to do? Not just send a generic message, but what's the one thing that's gonna help you in creating relationship and building trust with that client and closing the deal? For most photographers, that's not going to be submitting a contact form. It's gonna be actually scheduling a call. So you wanna think, okay, how can I reduce friction and make that happen as quickly and easily as possible? So instead of having contact us and fill out the form and we'll get back to you. What if you actually had a live call widget so you can set something up with a website called Calendly that will let you automatically book these appointments. So you set whatever time you want to be available for. So let's say you have your meetings on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from three till five o'clock. So you have this time window open. They can hit schedule a call. It will show up on the calendar and they can book it right away all there. There's no back and forth. Hey, when are you free for a call? Whatever. You can literally have a schedule a call now button instead of a contact me button. And then you can close that sale through a call. I will say that 90% of the time, it seems to be photographer's experience is that actually doing a call is going to be way, way more effective for you than having back and forth emails. It's way easier to close. It's way easier to build a relationship, answer questions, address concerns. So aim for the call, but specifically say, what is the one thing I want them to do? And then build your call to action around that. If you confuse them, you lose them. If you have no clear call to action, no clear next step, hey, you want to take the conversation further. The next step is to book a call where we see if we're the right fit for each other, right? Like that's easy, simple, straightforward, and you tell them. So tell them what you want them to do. That's going to make a massive difference that not many photographers are doing. And video chat. Nobody is doing this. So let me actually show you what I mean because, yes, a lot of people do Zoom. That's not what I'm talking about. What I am talking about, we're going to find it in here somewhere. Trust me. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. All the tabs. This is what happens when you have 1,800 tabs. Okay, so this website. A lot of things I find a little confusing about it. But what I love is this. See this little talk to me? So you could have a book call with a little picture of you just talking a little bit, your smiley, friendly face. What's really cool about this one, it's called Video Ask. You can get it through type form. And then... Well, it looks like you have a question or you want to get in touch. <laughs> Right? So you can actually have a little message saying, hey, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so pumped to meet you. I would love to set up a call because that's the only way we can really see if we're the right fit for each other. So just hit this button below. We'll be able to schedule your consultation and we'll have a quick call. See if it fits right. Sound good? Okay. Hit that button now. Do that and you'll have skyrocketed the amount of people who actually get in touch with you versus just get in touch. Okay? So tell them what to do. If you confuse, you lose, and calls will always close better than cold emails back and forth and a whole bunch of logistics. You want to remove the friction, make it as simple as possible to make that one next clear step, okay? If any of this has been helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button while I'm thinking about it. Leave a little comment. What do you need to apply to your business? Challenge yourself. Declare it. Okay, next, number seven, create real urgency. So here's the real problem with wedding photography sites, with corporate fashion, you name it, any type of photography is we have struggles creating actual urgency. Why should the client get in touch with you today and not tomorrow? Why should they do that right now instead of going to the next person's website to browse? You have to create a reason to act now. So different things that you can do to help with this. One will be limiting the availability. So on the top of your website, maybe you have a banner that says currently three more spots open for 2022. Something like that creates urgency. Now, 
even if that number is larger, we only have nine spots available. The beauty is that pretty much every photographer has a cap on how many weddings they can take on. So you could say, currently have three more dates available. And then after you fill those three dates, then maybe you can change it and say, hey, currently have one more date available. And then you just leave that plus one on there until your website eventually you're like, oh, I'm going to close bookings now. It's an option. Um, another thing you could do is actually on your info form about you. Hey, if you want to get in touch and you're interested in booking me for photography, please do because I tend to book out like 12 to 15 months in advance. I'd love to get in touch with you. You do need to book fast because my slots tend to book out so far in advance. Um, season promotion. So if you don't feel comfortable, don't want to do either of those or they don't work for your business model, you could actually look at doing different promotions every single season. So you can create a spring whatever, get ahead with spring <laughs> campaign. So it's like, okay, couples who book before March the 1st are actually going to get a 10% discount and blah, 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 blah. And then March the 1st comes around and you say, okay, so we've got March and we've got April and it's like, all right, what happens in April? Easter. So we have an Easter savings campaign. So just look at what fashion industries do. They have a sale like 99% of the time you go into Forever 21 or any, any clothing store ever, right? They're always selling everything on sale all the time. They just come up with an excuse to have a sale so that it's like, oh, I have to take advantage of this today. It's going to be over soon. I have to buy now. So how can you apply that to your business? Okay. Another thing you can do is collaboration. So you can work with other vendors and say, hey, if you book within the next 30 days, I'm doing a collaboration with this planner. She's going to give you uh, X, Y, Z. I'm going to give you A, B, C. And then you're going to get this sweet discount because you're saving like 500 bucks on both of us, right? So those kind of things, you can do as many of them as you want and do them throughout the year to create urgency to book now and not wait because that thing is not going to be around forever. Lastly, you can give people an incentive or a reward. So Eric Floberg, he's got an amazing YouTube channel, has a really hot tip. And uh, for him, what he does is he actually talks to the clients and he says, hey, I just want you to know that during their consultation, I... I like working with clients who are like sure they want to be working with me. And so I also like to book this off, get it reserved, get everything lined up for your date. And so during this call and for the next 24 hours, what I like to do is I offer $500 off my packages to those clients who are like sure they want to commit and make it happen. That's my reward to you for actually kind of taking the initiative, locking this in so that we can do the best possible job moving forward for your business, right? That's not exactly how he says it, but that's basically the idea. You say during the call for the next 24 hours, next 48 hours, whatever you want to say, I'm actually going to be able to give you this discount because I want to reward you for blank. Okay, so case study, myleadformula.com. Let's see if I can find it a little bit faster this time. Okay, now this, this is an amazing place you can learn is all of the internet marketers out there selling info products. So what has he got? He's got how my agency model currently makes me five figures a month and how you can clone it. Okay, so that's the sell and that's what you're going to get right? It's a free workshop that he's giving. And then he's got this little countdown clock, which doesn't necessarily apply to photographers. That's fair. And then he's got the benefits listed. So you're going to get this, you're going to get this, you're going to get this. So you could do the same kind of thing with your campaign, which is like, okay, for the month of March, sign up and you'll actually get this collaboration with blah, 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 blah. Sign up now before it's gone, whatever, right? Book your call now. And every call that we do, we give away some movie tickets. So it'd be interesting to say like, okay, if we actually offered a date night in exchange for taking on the call, would that be worth it to you? Because if you find out that by offering a date night, like, hey, register for a free call and whether or not you book, I'm going to give you guys two movie passes and a coupon for dinner for two. If you did that and you found out that you're radically getting more calls, you're getting three or four times more calls per week, would it be worth spending two or 300 bucks a week on movie t tickets? Of course it would be. Two or 300 bucks to book four or five more sessions would be an amazing exchange, right? Okay. And then most of the time what they're going to do, you're going to hit this, it's going to check availability. So you could have the same thing where you book in your time using Calendly. It's really easy to set up and super simple. And then enter your email. And then that way you can actually get in touch with them later, send them reminders, stay in touch, which is one of our tips further down the road. Number eight, risk reversal. All right. So let's just recap really, really quick. We've got number one, we want consistent, gorgeous photos. That's like a given. Two, you're going to follow that up with social proof, testimonials, logos, that kind of thing. Three, we're going to establish a unique offer, what you bring that is totally unique and special about you and who you specifically serve, why you're better than anybody else in that category. Four, create your attractive character to really get and build connection with your clients. Five, we're going to select SEO tags and kind of work with our existing content so that we're really maximizing what it does for us in terms of Google search. 
six. We're going to create clear next steps for our contact form and for whatever it is we want that client to do, we're going to tell them and give them a reason. Seven, create real urgency, a reason to act now. And number eight, risk reversal. So you take all those seven things. Risk reversal is really where it's at to get people to say yes and to make that booking, make that initial consult, whatever it is. So you have to think every stage of your business, there is going to be a risk to your customer for taking the next step. Even in just contacting you, that's a risk because now they're giving you their contact information and they're reaching out. It might be an awkward conversation for two of you. Um, it also might be that they schedule a call and they waste a bunch of time because they wound up not connecting with you at all, right? So there are risks even with small steps like that. Not even the big risk of booking you and maybe walking away with photos they're not happy with, right? So what you got to do is say to yourself, how can I guarantee that they will win by taking this action? So you got to think about your entire client process, right? The first step is probably they book the call. The next step is you do the call. The third step is you book an engagement shoot or something. The fourth is that you actually lock in the wedding date with a deposit. The fifth is that you follow up with blah, 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 blah. The sixth is that you do your album shoot, whatever. Depends on your specific niche, what that's going to look like. But you're going to write out every single step. And then you're going to write what risk are they taking if this goes wrong? What are they risking by taking this step? And then you have to say to yourself, okay, how do I address and reverse the risk so that it's risk-free for them and no matter what, they're going to win by taking this step. And if you can do that, oh man, all of a sudden, your closing rate is going to go through the roof because now it's like they have no reason not to take that next step. They would be crazy not to take that next step because no matter what, they win. It's like, okay, do this call and we're gonna give you a $100 date night experience and you actually partner with different vendors. Maybe you have a local restaurant that offers you a 20 dollar off coupon. You have a massage place that gives you free $1 massage. You have a, I don't know, 20 bucks ticket to a local like Dave and Buster's, something like that. And the idea being you create this date experience. You don't even need to pay for it because these vendors are actually wanting new customers. And then you offer that to them in exchange for taking the call. Now there's no risk because even if they don't connect with me, even if it's like a super boring, stupid conversation, they don't move forward and it's a waste of time, they still got 200 bucks worth of stuff. One great example of this is car lots. So oftentimes when I lived in California, I'd be getting these flyers in my mailbox and they'd say, hey, do you want $75 movie voucher? All you have to come and do is test drive a car. And after that, we'll give you the voucher. And so what would I do? I would go to the car dealership. Even if I wasn't looking for a car or thinking about buying a new car, all of a sudden I'm looking at and thinking about buying a new car because I'm test driving it to get that free thing. Because I know even if I don't buy the car, I still get the free thing. Cool. So you want to do that with every step of the process. Now, figuring out how to do that with the actual big ask of getting that booking might be a little bit more tricky for you. What I like to do or did when I was doing more weddings is I would offer the engagement shoot for free. So I'd say, hey, listen, we're going to do an engagement shoot first. So what I'm going to do, we'll book in your wedding day and then we're going to do an engagement shoot. We're going to do it. And if you don't like it for whatever reason, I'm going to give you your money back. So you actually have the chance to work with me before the wedding. Like that's every bride's real hesitation is it's like, okay, one, we want to do the engagement photography probably with our wedding photographer. And two, we want to work with and meet our wedding photographer in advance. So by offering that saying, Hey, place your deposit now. So we know you're not going to lose your date. Then we'll do your engagement shoot for free. And if you don't like it, I will refund you 100% of your money and you can go find the right photographer for you. That's perfect. And it gives me an out because if for whatever reason we get there, it's the engagement shoot. It's absolutely horrible for both of us. I do not want to work with this client for whatever reason. I have an out. I can say, hey, I just don't feel right working with you because I don't think I can do the best possible experience. So here's a couple names that you can try. I'm going to refund you your money. And I really appreciate the chance we had to kind of make a relationship, take some cool photos, and I wish you all the best. So it gives both of you an out and you both win because of it. So it's a double risk reversal. Remember, the larger the purchase, the greater the risk you're going to have to overcome. So just be creative about this kind of thing. What can you do so that no matter what, they win? Case study, pitch.com and signaturedis.com. So let's look at pitch.com first. So software sites are amazing examples of website marketing done really, really well. So they sell their major offer, what kind of value they're bringing. And then their whole thing down here, we scroll, they want to get you trying it out, right? So it's try for free. So they said, okay, how can we actually get people to pay for the software? We're going to get rid of all the risk by letting them try it for free, by giving them unlimited members, unlimited presentations, and custom templates and fonts. So they're saying, okay, we're going to give you this, this, and this. You try it out. Worst case scenario, you don't even buy the software. You just create a couple free presentations, right? Same thing. Uh, Canva does the same thing. 
um, signature edits, I've kind of done the same with my marketing materials. So if you're looking for a client bride guide or a wedding guide or a questionnaire template, whatever, I actually offer a seven day money back guarantee because I realize you might download the template, find out it's too complicated for you or find out that it just wasn't what you expected, whatever. We've all been there and bought that kind of stuff. So I have a seven day money back, love it, or I'll just refund you guarantee. Nobody else does that. So it separates me and it also kind of gets in the way, <laughs> it gets in the way, it gets rid of that major risk objection. All right. And again, I do the same thing with my more expensive marketing branding membership. So this membership is 500 bucks, but I have a whole guarantee, let's see, where you have 30 days, you can figure out if it's right for you. And if you love it, awesome. It's gonna build your business and I'm convinced it works because they're the same strategies I've used and seen used and we've had a lot of success with. But if it doesn't work for you, that's okay. You've got 30 days to figure it out. So by removing that risk, it definitely overcomes part of the hurdle of what happens if I buy this thing and it doesn't do what I thought it would do? So how can you apply that to your business? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Next, irresistible lead magnet. You can't book them if they never connect. So we talked about 90% of your website visitors are probably visiting, not contacting you, and never coming back. So you need to think, how can I get that contact information? Because not everybody is going to be ready to make a call. You got to think in the mind of your client, right? They might still be in the research stage where they're just trying to find 20 different people they like. And since they're in that stage and not the book or buy now stage, you have to think, okay, how can I make sure that they come back and that I get their contact information so I can build relationship, build trust, and eventually make the sale? Most of the time, the first time they come to your website, they're not going to book, right? So you need to create a resource that saves them time, money, or stress, helps them in some way, something super valuable, super crunchy, super easy. And when I say crunchy, I mean something that is really practical and quick to apply. So a cheat sheet, a guide, whatever, right? And then you want to place it at the front and center of your website. So that might be your very first like next action. Step one, download our free bride checklist. Step two, get in touch, book a call. It's going to be awesome. Right, So you want to place that in the front and center because we want their email. Once you have their email, then you can follow up automatically. So they type it in, they get their free guide, and then you send them an email right away with an email autoresponder. And you say, hey, thanks so much for downloading the guide. By the way, I'd love to set up a quick consultation. I'm going to give you $200 worth of date night materials in exchange for your time. Basically, we're just going to see if we're the right fit and get, kind of answer your questions, figure out a little bit more about you and whether we could connect in some way. Right, and that same thing would apply no matter what photography industry you're in. You have that free thing, the email sends out an automatic, like right away gets in their inbox, hey, thanks so much, by the way, let's set up a call because I can do this for you, right? So then you're gonna follow up with an email series and then if that one doesn't result in a call, then you can follow up with more helpful material. So if you're in the wedding space, for example, and they fill out this guide and you know that they're coming looking for a wedding photographer probably in your area, you can come out with and say, okay, so on Tuesday, I'm going to send them a list of all of my top 10 venues in the area. On Thursday, I'm going to send them a list of all of the best caterers and why I like each of them. On Saturday, I'm going to send them a list of the best photo spots in each area that I serve, right? And so you come out with all of this helpful information in a really personal way, like, hey, Evelyn, I just thought that you might enjoy this. I know when I was getting married, it was really hard for me to pick from all these different vendors. And so I went ahead and based on my experience in the area for the last 10 years, I found that these florists are absolutely amazing to work with. They deliver on time. Their prices are reasonable. Give them a call if you want. The beauty is you can also have referral relationships with them too. So you could possibly make money even if they don't book you as a photographer. So you're just building relationship. You're providing all this value up front so that they can know that you can deliver and trust that you're actually looking out for them. You're providing something to them first without asking for something in return. Okay. And once you do that, then you can have a book, a call at the very bottom of every single email and then maybe follow up after email number five or something like that with, hey, I hope these resources have been helpful. I would love to actually hear from you, create a little bit of a relationship and see if we might have a fit working together. Book a call here. Otherwise, it's okay. I'll leave you alone. Something like that, right? And you can keep emailing them for as long as you want. So if you're not in the wedding industry and let's say you're in fashion, you're in um, trying to get into the outdoor space and you have more corporate clients, you can do the same thing, but maybe it's once every week you come out with like, corporate media strategies or like here's some inspiration for fashion shoots if that's the kind of work you're doing right now or if you work with swimwear brands you can say okay here's what's trending here's some influencers you might want to contact in the space or um, here's some tips when it comes to blah 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 blah. so just think what problems do they have and how can I solve that problem and help them and provide value in advance and create a relationship because at the end of the day especially if you're doing non-wedding work you're doing like corporate work or anything like that it's all about relationship and trust Okay, so let's look at Vow to Wonder. They have a really amazing, I, I say they, it's really one person. It's this amazing Maria. 
And she has an amazing website where you can actually download somewhere on here. <laughs> She's got an elopement guide. So you can see right down here, free elopement planning guide. Get your hands on the ultimate elopement planning guide because that's the kind of thing she makes. And if that's the kind of thing she makes. She does elopement photography. And if you are looking to get an elopement done, obviously you're going to want a guide that's super valuable and super pertinent and super um, just an opportunity to show off your work and give them content in advance. So if you're into elopements, I'm actually designing one of these guides. You can watch for it. Check it out. It might already be live at the shop, shop.signaturettis.com. You can use a template to create one of these kind of guides much, much faster than trying to do it from scratch. So grab a template that already has pre-written text and all the design finished. You just drag in your own photos and customize and you're done. So very easy to do. doesn't have to be as complicated as you might think. All right, bonus, because we have done nine. This is the very last one that you can apply that is super powerful. You combine number nine with number 10, which is an exit pop-up. Now, exit pop-ups sound annoying, sound stupid, sound spammy, but I need you to ask yourself, if you're leaving a website anyways, and you're already not intending on coming back, does it really hurt to give them one last shot to offer them this juicy thing if they haven't seen it already? So let's just say we visited Maria's website, we're taking a look, blah, 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 and we don't actually click through and download her guide. So now she has no idea who we are, she can't get in touch, she can't build a relationship, and I might never come back. What she could do is have an exit pop-up. So when I go to exit, go to a different tab, whatever, it pops up and says, hey, before you go, you should probably download this elopement guide, which shares my top 10 tips. It shares a timeline. It shares this, that, that, kind of the top three benefits of whatever you're offering and the top three pain points it solves. So um, the mistakes that most people make when planning an elopement, how to select locations, what to do if the weather is bad, and more, right? Download now. And then people can click it, hopefully, and you have that email, whereas before they would have just left. So here's an example, just so you can see this in action. Let's open up a new tab. We scroll, we go through, we're about to leave, and it pops this. So this won't apply to you because you're not a photographer. But for agency people, get your free copy, how to build a multi-million dollar marketing agency, right? Then there's a picture of your product, and get it now. So because of this, he's capturing people who otherwise would have left forever, and now he's the chance to send that same email sequence and do it. So if you want to know more about how to set this kind of thing up and actually do that kind of follow-up email sequence, it's not as complicated as you'd think. There are free tools to do it. I have an email course on my page um, somewhere in here. <laughs> Let's find it. There is an email course somewhere on here that actually goes through how to set this kind of thing up, but it's really, really easy and it's all using free tools. So you can do this in like an afternoon and it makes a massive difference in your business, okay? I know photographers who that's like the only strategy they do and it's working for them. You know, there are other ways to build that email list. You can actually have um, client galleries where they have to, in order to share with friends and family the photos, they have to enter their emails and so then you can build a relationship that way with those people too. So there's a whole course that talks about that on my website. You can check it out. Anyways, that is pretty much it. So I hope this was helpful. Those are the top <laughs> nine plus one things that you can do and you definitely should do on your photography website to increase the conversions, increase the contacts, and ultimately increase the bookings that you get. If this was helpful, do me a massive favor. Hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment, please. If I by doing this and sharing all my resources and time and information with you have done something for you. I would really appreciate if you do that for me. And if you want more, um, I am going to give you a 50% off code. So kind of an incentive to act now. This will probably only be live for like the first 20 people. Um, so 50% off if you want to grab the photography marketing membership, just use the coupon code. Let's go at checkout and 30 day results guarantee because there's no risk. You try it. You don't like it. No big deal. You try it. You love it. You win, right? So win, win. All right. Anyways, I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome and make sure you leave a comment with the number one strategy that you are committed to applying today. All right, see you in the next video. Peace.